Welcome back. Today we're talking about grown adults at their absolute worst. And now we're looking at adult temper tantrums. 27-year-old Stephen has a temper tantrum almost every single day. And now his girlfriend Asia says he is one fight away from going to jail. I have temper tantrums over the littlest of things, from not getting my hair right to dropping stuff on the floor. I blow up literally every day. One thing that really sets me off is when people stare at me and my girlfriend Asia because we're a biracial couple, and also because of the height difference between us. Asia will do everything she can to get me to not see red. Steven's anger is so bad that he's been banned from bars, our daughter's elementary school, and restaurants. I have to literally calm him down so he doesn't have to get into a physical fight. I've punched walls, I've broke mirrors, I've broke cups. He's broken 10 phones, he's thrown things across the room. He has such horrible road rage that he's driven people off the road. I feel like Steven is one fight away from going to prison. And I think about that every time I'm not with him. I know my anger is a burden on Asia. And I'm afraid my temper tantrums are going to push her away. If Steven doesn't manage his temper, he'll lose me. You know, Stephen, let's talk about the impact that it's having on your life, because I couldn't help but be struck by the fact that you've been banned from restaurants and banned from the elementary school. Mm -hmm. So what happened that had a number of locations ban you? Uh, well, one incident with a restaurant situation was a bar and grill. I was out trying to have a good time with a couple of buddies of mine, and one of my buddies was drinking a lot, and he got into altercation with a guy and they was arguing or whatever and I decided to step in and intervene with it trying to protect my buddy because he wasn't in the right state of mind drinking as much as he was. The guy then put his hands on my buddy around his neck and that's when I threw him across the table and uh, they and doing that caused me to get banded. Me and him both get banded from the bar and grill indefinitely. And what about the elementary school? But the elementary school is uh, you know we're a biracial couple. My kids are you know they're mixed so we live in Alabama, it's a small town, um, very racist area. Um, they want to treat my kids differently. My kids are coming home, my daughter's coming home with black eyes, talking about she's getting hit with on the With black eyes? She got a black eye on the school bus. On the school bus. And so we go to the school and Steven had an outburst at school. So now our daughter's homeschooled and our son is going to school and we die with my mom. Road rage incident, guy cut me off, flipped me off, whatever. I followed him to the gas station. When he was getting out of the car is when I hit him, and the last thing I remember is I was coming to and the guy's laying there. You live in Alabama? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a criminal defense attorney. You know that's a stand-your-ground state. No. I, I did not. That's know. the point. That's it why It scares I went, the yeah. hell out of me that you might rage at the wrong stranger. I mean, you could end yeah. up dead because of this. Yeah. He'll use the vehicle to try to prove his point, too. Yeah. So, well, it's big. That's no, why. As, You've as got, in, like, ten, you know, whatever, will, two tons of metal around. around. Yeah. Literally. I'll you try to, to what? Run people That's off what the I mean road. by he'll use the vehicle to the prove his point. So that's are you scared why, to be in the like, car Steven, with him? That's why I'm like, I'm in the car with you, so if they do pull a gun out or if we do get in a wreck, you're hurting me, too. You know, it's a, it's a whole situation. How does this impact you? You said that he's broken 10 phones this year? Yeah, he's breaking them. He's not throwing them down. He's literally with his two hands and he's snapping the phones in half. Snapping a phone he's in half? He's snapping them in half. You can do that? I don't even. Let the GPS not work and uh, we're yeah. going somewhere. The phone's gonna break. You said that you're his buffer. Yes. What does that mean? It's just me to just say a stop because if he gets into another fight, he'll go to jail for three years. Now explain that. If he gets in another fight, he's going yes, go to go to jail for three, for three years. years. What does that mean? Uh, when I was younger, uh, well, the last, actually the last fight I got into right before me and her, when I went in front of the judge, that's what he told me. He said, next time, he said, he put me on three years probation this time. And um, he told me if I get in another fight, another altercation, it's going to be three years in Alabama Correctional Facility. And when is probation over? Uh, it's done now. I'm done with that. Wait, well, you're still so worried that, that okay, me. so we have not gotten in trouble. No, he has good. not gotten into a fight years. in seven years since he met no me. No fight in seven years. No uh, fight in seven years? Seven years. When but I, you feel it coming. Yes, yes, and it's here lately, the past, really in the past year, is the rage is worse. Why it's, do you think? Because I haven't been in no fights. And I, I love to fight. I've always loved to fight. I, I grew up in a family of violence, and uh, that's what we was taught, is to not take you nothing away from You don't walk away from nobody. That's, that's showing weakness. And that's, so I've always liked to fight. I've done MMA. I've done Taekwondo to help with it. This must be it, exhausting but, for you. 
It is exhausting. Because we don't go to the movies, we don't go out, we don't eat inside restaurants. We don't do anything that is gonna involve him getting, because he's gonna fly off no matter where we're at. If you stare, he's gonna confront you about it. It sounds miserable. It is. It's, I mean, I don't know if I can stop myself or if somebody can stop me if I do jump on somebody again. And it's, it's a scary feeling, especially when I start getting mad. I'm starting to get to that point of blacking out. And I can't just stop myself. She has stopped me. This has been our life for seven years. So, you know, it's hard when you can't go out and about and just do like normal everyday stuff that everybody else would do. We have to go and we buy DVDs and we sit at home. And you know, it's just basically, it's making you more, but I'm a homebody anyway, but it's making you feel like that's the only place that you can go. I understand that you have gotten help for this in the past. I have, I was in anger management for three years after the uh, cancer because I was, when I was 12, I found out I had cancer, chronic myogenes, leukemia, I had a 13% chance of living. And at that point when so you- So you are a fighter. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they got me in anger management. I did anger management for three years, which has got me, it did calm me down a lot, but I still like to fight. I, I still enjoyed fighting, um, but I fought for a reason then. And I thought that there was a that reason That was the for MMA it. and that was the other stuff you were doing. Yes, the MMA helped a lot. I know if she wasn't around and I was to blow up on somebody again after this long without being in any confrontations, I'm, I'm scared of myself. I'm scared to know what I'm going to do. Well, that must be scary not to it be is. able to trust yourself. It is. Well, we're going to dig into that when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back. Today we're talking about grown adults who can't control their anger. And I'm back here with Stephen and his fiance Asia, who says that Stephen's rage is going to land him in prison. And Stephen's here to get some help. So I want to go back because you've shared a little bit about your story. But tell me, where do you think this comes from? Like I said, I grew up in an abusive family. Um, when you got whooped, you got whooped. And you're gonna know it, you're gonna have marks on you, you know, whatever else. And uh, so I, I grew up seeing that. And with my sister, my oldest sister having to raise us, feed us at nine, eight years so old. So they were basically absent. They were basically absent. My dad worked two jobs. Uh, my mom did daycare, but the kids, even at the daycare, we ran wild. Stephen was living by himself at 15. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, do you have a relationship with your parents now? My dad, I do. My mom, I do not. My sisters, I do not. You know, the thing about having rage like this, because this is more than just a tantrum. I almost hate using the word tantrum mm -hmm. because it, it kind of... It is rage. Yeah, it's rage. Is that when you keep getting your buttons pushed, you typically have a narrative about life that makes you angry. That things, like, and I'm just going to riff for a second, so just, just hear me out for a second. So if I had to put together all the pieces based on listening to you very keenly, and you talked about having cancer as a kid, and you talked about the household you grew up in, and you experienced the neglect firsthand, mm -hmm. I would develop a narrative that life isn't fair, that nobody cares about me, that I'm invisible, that I don't matter, and what can happen when you start to see the world that way. And as a little kid, that's what everything kind of lined up to be, right? Yes. What happens as an adult, if you don't get control of this, is you can start to see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to know for you, because it's so important for you to start to understand the narrative that developed in your own mind, what is it that really hits you the hardest? Is it that you don't matter? Is it that life is hard? What is it that just is like, oh? I really don't know. I guess no nourishment growing up. Um, no, no, nobody caring. I mean, you, she grew up in a loving home. Don't get me wrong, her family is great. I love her family to death. They, I, I look at them like my family more than my own family. And uh, I never got showed attention growing up, or love, I guess you would say, growing up. My, my dad, finally showed me some attention and, you know, see his wrongs and we're better. And I, I understand that now. That's why my mind and his relationship are good. And that's what she's the first person that's ever showed me any kind of attention before my dad did. And it was, you know, what word comes up for me with you is safe. 
I am willing to bet a ton of money on the fact that you as a kid never felt safe, that you had an experience growing up like, when's the other shoe gonna drop? When is something bad gonna happen? When is this gonna oh, happen? That's exactly how it is. Cause when we first met, he gave it until Valentine's Day for us to break up. Like the year of Valentine's Day, he was like, it's not gonna last past Valentine's Day. And seven years later, here we are. And so, so here's the deal. You as a kid to survive, figured out like, I got a brace. I got a brace for the worst. I got a brace for the worst that I'm prepared for it. It's like, you're always looking around waiting for it to happen. And that's why you're so easily triggered because you're looking for it. And so the thing that's gonna be critical for you is for you to change the way that you see the world because you're not under attack anymore. You might have been. You see what I mean? And that's gonna take some work. But one of the other things that's really critical is for you to come up with your why, for why it matters to get a hold of this. What is a reason that's big enough for you to get control of this? To stop the anger cycle so my kids don't pick it up. My dad has it, my grandmother had it. That's an amazing reason. Yeah. That's the biggest reason of all. Another reason is so that you could actually enjoy your life. Exactly, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Like finally enjoy your life. We'll be right back. <laughs>